Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lamp Working 101.76. Today I have a really fun bead for you guys. I just love the way that clear glass can enhance and distort any pattern underneath it. And although this is a really simple technique, it is time consuming. This bead probably took about 45 minutes or so, but you can always scale down the size of the bead, make the pattern whatever you like. In the end, it's all about how you add the clear glass. So without further ado, let's get right into this. Thank you all so much for watching and joining me. As always, I hope you're all doing safe and well out there. And on that note, we'll see you next time in the dungeon. All right, so the very first thing that we need to do here is to start to add the glass to our mandrel. And I have a white for my base, and I am just going to add about, well, I added more than I wanted initially, but <laughs> no matter what, depending on what kind of bead you're making, you wanna lay down the very first footprint accordingly. So here I'm laying down several footprints on top of each other, right next to each other, to make a really long bead. And I'm using kind of a, I, I really enjoy using a thicker white rod. I, I like to work slightly on the large side, I guess. <laughs> so as I'm building up this bead, I'll add a little extra to both ends and then roll them out real gently. And, um, now I'm just heating things up. I wanna keep shaping things, but here in real time, I want you to see how slow I am actually rolling. Nice and slow, I'm not adding too much pressure. One side of the bead is cooler than the other side, which helps me to straighten everything out. And now I'm just working on my edges. And I am just tapering those edges just slightly. Okay, now it's time to add our pattern. And adding the pattern can take as long as you want or as short as you want, time-wise. Um, this probably took me about uh, maybe 10 minutes to add all of these dots. And I'm gonna be adding the dots in layers, transparent layers with black and white. <laughs> So I thought I would first start by adding dots in a very random order, but it turns out that there was quite a bit of order to these dots. So um, it ended up being um, this kind of a two dot, three dot, two dot pattern. And that's fine. I like the way it looks. I just wanna make sure that the whole background's nice and full of these dots. And sometimes I'll press dots down. Other times I will just very gently roll them out. Like right here, I will just press down a little bit and then continue my roll. No matter what, I want to try to maintain the shape that I had initially made with the white glass. Okay, so once the first round of dots are melted in and nice and smooth, I'm gonna start to add some white dots right in the middle of the black dots. And I will let you know right now that my dot placement here is not precise and I don't want it to be precise because the end pattern will look more interesting. <laughs> So I do my best just to add the dots mostly in the center of those black dots. And this will give me a really nice base to start building up my transparent layers with. First, I'm just gonna heat them down a little bit, smooth everything out. And when I heat up a long bead like this, I'm heating on the left side and the right side and the left side and the right side. I'm not just heating in the center. That's so important because you want the whole bead nice and hot all the way through from side to side. Okay, let's get into some color here. So today I am using three really beautiful transparents. One of them is um, a dark violet, which I am using here. 
in a fetry dark violet. It's really a beautiful purple. One of my favorite transparent purples. It is a little dark though, so try only to use so much. And the next color here is a CIM color. It is called Leaky Pen. And it's like a, uh, a bluish transparent, really beautiful. It looks great with that violet too. And all I'm doing is just randomly or trying to randomly place these dots down. I just want a couple of each. And then my final color is gonna be a medium grass green. And I'll add those dots to fill up the rest of the spaces that I need. And just to let you guys know, I do tend to turn my torch settings up and down as I make my beads. If I need a little bit more oxygen, I'll add it. If I want a smaller flame, I'll get it smaller to do more detail. So here I'm just heating everything up and instead of using a butter knife to start flattening everything down, I just use my little um, marble mold, which is upside down, so I have a nice flat surface to push on. And it does take time. You do a little bit here, a little bit there. You start to heat everything up and just gently start to press everything down. Maintaining that shape that we started with. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna get a little smaller. So I am using, I'm going into a, a white stringer now. And I'm gonna add a white dot on top of everything. I mentioned earlier, I think, that this bead took about, about 45 to 50 minutes to make. So it is time consuming when you start getting much larger. You can make this pattern on any size B that you feel comfortable making though. And the best part about this whole technique is that the pattern doesn't even have to be dots. The pattern can be your favorite pattern, uh, you know, a line pattern, a dot pattern, a mix of the two. Get creative. Okay, so I have these white dots melted in. And now on top of these, I want to go ahead and add the same colors, um, but I don't wanna add the same transparent on top of the same transparent. So you're kind of looking into these darker colors now that they're hot and trying to make sure <laughs> that, you know, I'm trying to make sure I'm not adding the green on top of another green dot. So you can kind of see the color differences in these three different colors. So I have a good idea of what color needs to be placed on what dot. As I'm adding these dots, because I'm shaky, I usually will wrap my pinky finger around the mandrel. And you know, the way I hold my glass rod is a little unconventional as well. Most people are gonna add their dots um, more in uh, maybe an up and down um, the way, but I have my rod it's not quite parallel, but because I'm holding the mandrel with my pinky finger, it's a little different. Okay, our third color, our final color, oh, it's the green. I just had a couple spots to do on that. Okay, so now that we have our two layers of transparent, we're gonna heat the whole thing up again. And as the dots get smaller and smaller, you don't have to heat it as much I guess because you're not melting down a whole big you know um, dot of glass they're just small dots so it's an easier heat yet you're still making sure that you're heating the whole bead up the middle the right side the left side and so on and so forth so your whole bead is a nice temperature and I'll let you know this too I tend to work isn't that pretty I just love the way these look in the heat 
Okay, I'm gonna add a final layer here of very tiny white dots. And then on top of that, I decided that I would um, get some kind of a, uh, a, a completely different color. So on top of these dots, I ended up adding um, a ruby, uh, kind of a pink transparent. And it ended up being a great color um, to see on top of all these other dots. It was a good color, I guess, to, to bring it all together. I'll say it like that. Okay. And as the dots get smaller, you want to use smaller stringers. And I'm just grabbing the glass from the heat and laying them down, making sure I get every one and trying to get the same amount of glass on every one as well. Okay, so I'm doing a final heat here and just heating up everything. My pattern is almost done. I just need to flatten everything out. Heating on the top, heating on the bottom. I can't stress how important that is. You always want to maintain the, the shape of your bead and you do that by gentle heating over the whole bead. It's really easy to overheat the glass. So you want to try your best you know, to melt everything in, but not to overheat it too much at this point. A lot of times I'll make beads like this and they end up being a lot larger than I think. <laughs> so uh, it becomes more time consuming. Okay, we have this awesome pattern on here and now it's time to get some clear glass on here so we can finish up this bead and really get a nice distortion on it from the vertebrae pattern. And when I do this, I do like to use, like I said before, a large, like a eight millimeter rod, seven to eight millimeter or eight to nine millimeter. Um, it just gives me more glass. I, I feel more comfortable because I'm able to heat up more glass and then it's easier for me to get the glass to go all the way around um, the bead as it gets bigger. So I'm gonna add like five wraps here, doing my best to have the wraps to not touch each other. So in the end, what's gonna happen is where the glass, where the clear glass isn't touching um, the, uh, it's not touching the bottom pattern, that's where the pattern is going to wick up to the surface and give you this really amazing effect. And you can add as much glass, as much clear glass as you want, but the more clear glass that you add, the more depth you're gonna see in the pattern. So I'm adding a whole another row of clear and just to let you know yes the bead does get a, a much heavier here too and I'm gonna finish up by adding uh, a three more wraps into the center wraps so the end wraps stay a little a little smaller so the bead will have a tapered effect. Okay, now that all that's on there, um, it's time to heat everything in. So I'm going to heat on, I got my torch going a little bushier, a little bigger, and I'm heating at um, angles, basically. I'm heating, okay, I'm heating straight forward, but I'm also trying to heat the angles and getting all of those wraps melting together at the same time. That's really important because you want everything to melt down at the same time. So you're trying to heat one side, trying to heat another side, and yes, it takes a good, this probably took a good 10 minutes to melt down. Here it is a little slower. I just want you to see how slow I'm actually moving my mandrel. I'm moving nice and slow so it 
it's easier for the glass to soak up that heat and melt down the way I want it to, melt down nice and evenly. And this is when things get a little weird, you know, it always has to get weird here. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of rolling it down and I, I'm noticing that it's taking, it's taking a long time to heat this up. So um, what I ended up doing was rolling it out, but there's these little kind of divots where the clear glass um, didn't touch <clears throat> uh, when I added the wraps. So one thing I didn't want to do was I didn't want the transparent, all those dots and the color to wick up all the way to the surface. So after I melt it down most of the way, I'm going in here and just adding some glass to those little valleys um, that were created and that will ensure that the color itself doesn't wick all the way up to the surface. And the reason why I, I didn't want that to happen is because I didn't want any colors to bleed out or get funky on the surface. And other weird things that happened in the studio is that I had all the best of intentions of, of, of pressing this into um, this big lentil press. And I got it set up and ready to go. And, you know, when I went and checked the size, uh, my bead was just way too big. So here I am just trying to heat things up and you'll see I will try to, you know, go in and, and just kind of check the size. But this bead press was too small and it's one of those one and a half inch bead presses. And at this point I kind of had to change my whole ending here. And instead, what I did was I used the curve of the bead press to help me get into a final shape. So I am very gently pressing um, the edges of the bead into the curve. I do the right side first, and then I'll do the left end, and then I will just focus the rest right in, the focus the rest of my heat right in the center. And it got me to my final shape um, much quicker. And that is about it. I'm just going to roll it out. And I'm so glad if you guys are sticking with me still. I'm really happy that you made it all the way to the end. I hope you enjoy the way that this bead looks. Um, in the final picture. I was really pleased with it and I hope you are too. And on that note, we'll see you next time in the dungeon.